Hello everyone, I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. So I decided to switch it up. Um, but anyway, Gospel first, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and the third day rose from the dead for our justification. You must believe in the dead, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ today to be saved. Simple as that. Trust on the Lord Jesus Christ and believe Him. Okay? He died for your sins. Okay? He shed His precious blood for you. That way, your sins can be forgiven on His own account. Okay? Jesus became sin so that we can become righteousness of God in Him. Okay? He became sin for us. So therefore, trust Him today and be saved. Okay? Um, the rapture will happen and Jesus is coming. So I'm telling you guys, it is time to be born again. If you're not born again, time to do so. Because if not, you're going to be in for a rude awakening, people. Anyway, I just want to share something real quick. Um, so you know how a lot of times people are just kind of putting, you know, the rapture is going to happen on this feast or that feast or that. No, 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 no. You guys are missing the point. Totally missing it, you know. It is fashion after, again, I think I made a video on this a while ago. Uh, it's fashion after ancient Galilean wedding, okay? And even a lot of stuff that Jesus said literally points to exactly that. Let me ask you guys this question. Was Jesus born a Jew? Answer is yes. So that means he's not having a Gentile wedding, okay? And if he is the bridegroom and he's coming for his bride, guess what you're going to be having? A Jewish wedding, okay? That's exactly how the whole analogy is set up, okay? He fashioned it just that way. Secondly, um, the the way it works from what I've understood on the Jewish, uh, well, the ancient Galilean wedding is the bridegroom meets the bride, presents a gift, okay? And once the, and then there's some kind of a covenant that's made between them two once the bride accepts that, okay? The bride accepts the gift and then the bridegroom leaves to go to prepare a place in his father's house for his bridegroom. I'm sorry, for his bride. And then once he's done, then the father at some point will say, go get your bride. Then the bridegroom will now leave and send his people up front to go announce that he's coming. And at the meantime, however long that takes, the bride is always ready to leave for the wedding all the time. So she's always ready. So it's not like she has to figure out, you know, what to do. No, no, she's always ready, okay? See, same thing with the church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, okay? We are made ready by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? We are. And all we're doing is watching and waiting for him to come for us, okay? So with that being said, I want you to be encouraged today and realize something. Date setting, that is not how that works. When the father sends the son, says, go get your bride, that's when the rapture takes place. The same order of fashion, okay? And this is why Jesus said in, in John 14, in the beginning, remember when he said it? He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms or dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will also come back to receive you unto myself so that where I am, you may be also. Okay. This is the same analogy used here when you're looking at the ancient Galilean wedding. Same concept. The bride, the bridegroom goes to prepare a place for the bride. And then when he comes back to receive the bride, he takes the bride back to his father's house where he has prepared a place for the bride. Okay. That's what we are looking forward to. So I hope someone gets encouraged today and just jump off the bandwagon of date setters, okay? Um, I don't think they're doing it out of spite to deceive anyone. I think they're doing it out of excitement because they think they can figure it out. But sadly, none of us knows the mind of God and when God is going to send his son. But we can tell the time is near based on his second coming and all the prophecies that's already given to us. Even what Jesus said himself to tell us in Matthew 24, when we see these things, you know, to look up because the redemption, you know, draws near, right? He's at the door. He's at the door. You keep hearing him say he's at the door. Well, you cannot know he's at the door if you're not watching. And the only way to watch is to see 
Bible prophecy foretold being fulfilled. Okay? So it is good to study Bible prophecy and see what's being fulfilled. I'm going to tell you guys something. Uh, also concerning salvation, for those people that like to rail against, you know, eternal security, I have something for you. 144,000 that got saved instantly when the rapture takes place. How did they get saved? Hmm? Were they uh, baptized? Were they speaking in tongue? Who did all that? It was God that sealed them literally that very second. He did it just like that. He did it just like that. And let me tell you something. Read Ezekiel 36. Consider what God is going to do to save Israel. How he's going to save them in the end, right? When you read all that, then you understand that salvation belongs to God. Not you, not me. It is his way. How he chooses to save them, that's what he does. Okay? Christ died already, once and for all. That salvation is based on the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. Okay? Everyone is receiving the same salvation. The only thing different now is, God says, I am going to save you because I'm going to wash you clean. I'm going to forgive all your trespasses. I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to remove the stone, the stony heart you got and give your heart of flesh. I'm going to put my spirit in you. You notice the key word here. I, I, I. That's what God is saying. Again, it is all about what God has done and nothing that you can do. People, when you want to argue, take it up to God because I'm going to tell you this. The Bible doesn't lie. Throughout the Old Testament, we've seen the, 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 the picture of salvation and who God is. God is so loving. He doesn't want any to perish. Why would he make salvation so difficult and yet giving it to you for free? But it's difficult. That's like an oxymoron statement. Those two don't even go together. So for those who think that they can earn their way into heaven, good luck with that. Because remember that Matthew 7, 21 through 25, or, you know, that you guys like to quote against us, you know, eternal security believers, right? Which is, by the way, biblical. That is for you, Pharisees, all the people who sit here denying the eternal security, thinking you have something to do with your salvation. It is all the doing of God, not you. So again, stay off rapture dates watching and just expect Christ any day. Rest in him and enjoy the fellowship with God, okay? While you wait for the Messiah and see what's going on and be excited. Know that time is short and we're going to be out of here soon. But setting up dates and listening and following is only a setup for disappointment. And it happens. I've seen people say, I'm tired of watching. You know, well, Jesus is not coming anymore. Comments like that is really discouraging. You know what I mean? And I'm like, come on, people. We are better than this. You know? There's so many people who are not that mature in Christ that get super excited because, oh, this is a high watch date. People tell me high watch date. Every date is a high watch date. Every day. Because Jesus can come any moment, making the rapture imminent. Okay? Simple as that. And we will know as we see the day approaching. But we will know the rapture date until the day comes. When that day comes, then you will know. But you're not going to have a foreknowledge of the rapture, but we will have a foreknowledge of the season based on Bible prophecy. And that's what we see today. So anyway, I just want you guys to stay encouraged today. I love you guys. And please continue to rest in Christ. If you don't know what that means, that means stop looking at yourself and focus on Jesus Christ. Okay? If you want to grow spiritually, stop looking at yourself. Stop counting your sins and start counting the blessings and the grace think about all wonderful good things that god has done to save you okay focus on him meditate on christ you know read your bibles people so you can learn more about god and his character okay it will help you as a believer to know how to walk as a believer okay so that you become uh, uh, fruitful for him and bring glory to his name versus become unuseful you don't want to be that unuseful believer who is pretty much walking after the flesh nonstop. You don't want to be that person, you know, because we want people to get saved. So if you want people to get saved, you, my friend, need to rest in Christ and learn about him. Learn what he tells us to do and what not to do and just listen, okay? You are still saved. Even those who doesn't listen, you know, when you read the, the parable of the wedding uh, banquet, Okay, when you read that, you will understand there's something that stuck out when he invited, he said to invite both the good and the bad. And both the good and the bad was at the wedding feast, just so you know. 
and they all had that robe of righteousness. So what does that tell you? You're going to have carnal Christians. You're going to have those who are truly on fire for God, you know. But we encourage you not to be a carnal Christian. We want you to be on fire for God. As always, this is the truth. God bless you, and you have a wonderful day. Bye. Go kick it with the wifey. Peace.